I don't think it's a stretch to say that financial education is important. And we've actually been talking quite a long time about how it should start young, right? The government also says Absolutely. it should start at school, this whole thing about budgeting and saving and everything like that. But the fact is, you know, it's easier said than done. And most of the time, kids get pick up what they see from their parents and their parents themselves maybe not have the healthiest financial habits. So you talk to a, a startup called Tauke and they are doing the interesting thing where they're targeting kids and parents. How does that work? Yes. So little Tauke is this, uh, it, it's a few year old, I think it was started in 2017, Para based startup. And they actively set out to include parents as part of their overall financial education um, aspiration, I suppose. Yeah. There generally are only very, very few financial education companies in Malaysia. Mm. It's still a very small sector, yeah. um, but it's clearly addressing a very important niche. And I think what sets Little Tauke apart is the fact that they've identified the fact that parents are the ones who actually have the biggest and most overarching say in how kids develop their financial habits. Mm. And so I guess it made sense for them, and it seems to make sense to me as well, that they would want to actively include parents as part of the curriculum, as part of the syllabus. Yeah, because they gave a very good example. They say, you know, you get an ang pao from your parents, the child is given it, has money, but then the mother takes it away and <laughs> says, I will invest it, I, I, I'm joking, right? But they will do something with yes. it and you never see the money again. Yes. So the habit that ingrains in you is that if I have money, I must spend. Yeah. You know, otherwise it will go away to be yeah. invested into something. Yes. So how does that program work to educate both? I think the program, by and large, um, the, the, the message that Little Tauke tells me is that at the end of the day, mm. financial education applies across the board. It's not as if parents learn completely different principles from that of the kids. It's simply the level of complexity, the layers of details. Mm. Those are really what makes the difference. Mm. Um, but for me personally, I thought the really interesting and, and profound bit from the story was how these habits tend to be born out of, you know, perhaps even subconscious um, traumas or tensions that children might have perceived. Um, as a result of parents sort of laying down the law, so to speak, uh, as regarding financial um, education and, and financial management habits. Okay. So um, Little Tauke, I think, has done the most out of a number of education companies I've spoken to to really unpack that dynamic and really delve into the psychology behind it. And I think that's what they are presenting, at, at least to the parents, um, and it's kind of bringing those issues into the forefront of the parents' mind, so they then kind of realize that there are certain things they should be doing for kids, certain mm. things they shouldn't, and it's no longer sort of simmering just beneath the surface out of anybody's consciousness. That's an interesting... I mean, because spending money is very psychological, isn't it? It is, it, yeah. it, There is a phrase I once heard somebody use where it's either nafsu ke perlu. You know, <laughs> is yes. it want or is yes. it a need? And yeah. I think separating that or teaching your child to separate that is mm. probably one of the most basic things, right? If you want to teach them financial education, never mind investing or whatever, but just this, what do you call it, sort of deciphering between what is a want and what, oh, what yes, is a need. Yeah. So how do people like little Tauke then, in this effort to educate people, make money? I mean, it is a program after yeah. all. Well, so they run uh, a series of classes. Um, and I think they break it out to, I think, two or three different age groups. They've got the little kids, obviously, up to about age, ages 8 to 12, um, 13 to 17 or 18, and then adults as being the next uh, um, uh, target demographic. So these are all paid-for classes. You can uh, enroll your kids or teenagers, for example, into what they call, I think, a camp millionaire. Um, and it's a, it runs for a few days, and that's kind of where they really inculcate some of these lessons. But what I thought was really interesting is that, yes, parents have this specific uh, class set aside for them, but in addition to that, after each module that the kids complete, each module comprising of a few lessons, the parents themselves are invited after the class to sit in with the coaches to run through exactly what the kids learned, and then they are given strategies to go back home and practice as a means to reinforce these lessons. So clearly they're kind of walking the talk. They're not just trying to make money off of the parents by selling these courses to them. Whether or not you get these courses, the parents still are required to participate uh, in the kids' and uh, teenagers' uh, sessions as well. For more on the stories, pick up a copy of The Edge Weekly at all good newsstands.